ago in a distant podcast. I, Silver Quill, the snarky podcaster of darkness, unleashed my sexy smooth voice. But a foolish planeswalker extraordinaire named Norman Sanzo stepped forth to oppose me. Silver, your reign of terror shall stop here and now. And he found an ally in my friend Sapphire Heart Song. Extra thick! Which I am. I don't have a response for that. Welcome everyone to the MBS show and for our little Samurai Jack introduction because guess what we're talking about today? Are we talking about Pokemon? Puppies? Oh yes, we're talking about Pokemon puppies. <laughs> <laughs> Which means this is an all Arcanine discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Yay? Actually, actually, I'm so out of touch with Pokemon that that's the only puppy I know. Surely there's more than him. Growlithe, Lillipup, um... Oh, I've opened the floodgates. Rockruff. Well, that is that may be a podcast for another day, in fact. Pokemon puppies. Furfrow! But no, we, today we are talking about the long-anticipated, I'm sure much debated, fifth season of Samurai Jack, where he's got to get back to the past for realsies this time. Yes. <laughs> This podcast comes courtesy of Nem Derogatorius, who is a Patreon supporter, for which we are very grateful. And he asked that we talk about Samurai Jack. And well, because of, I, I think he got the hint that we've been talking about it while the show was running. So, yeah. It's Can you blame I'm... us? It's a good show. Indeed. And yeah. I regret not seeing it in my youth. And it could be that we were all blubbering like babies after the final episode. <laughs> <laughs> Makes no sense, but it's so sad. Silver, hold me. I can't. There's a computer screen in the way. Do it when we get to Brownie's count out. You there. have puppies. Oh, there we go. Do puppies. puppies. I mean, hug puppies. Hug, hug puppies. <laughs> but just for you all to be aware, we are going to be talking about spoilers. This is going to be talking about basically the arcs of the season five finale season. We will go with general thoughts and our overall enjoyment, but then we're going to go deep down the rabbit hole. Be aware. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Yep. And we'll try and talk about the previous season if it's applicable and if we can remember it because I certainly don't. <laughs> but anywho, Silver, you have the floor. Well, I should. I've been passed out on it enough. <laughs> yep. Uh, from the beatings or from the drinking? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here to drink your beer and steal your from that one Anyways. Excellent. So, but first we're going to go with just general impressions of this season five. And so, Norman, I task you with opening the, the discussion. All righty then. So, I've watched Samurai Jack in the past. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> because he's a... <laughs> uh, nah, nah, nah. Back to the past, Norm and Jack. Uh, but, 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 I'm not Ashi. I have a boyfriend. Uh, but, but anywho. So did Ashi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just mean. <laughs> but anywho, um, I watched Samurai Jack um, when I was growing up. But I never had that proper schedule because when I watched it, I watched it on cable TV via Cartoon Network. And you know how that is. You never know when it's going to be popped up. you got no idea if it's going to be a rerun or not. And it's very confusing. And I just know till recently that Samurai Jack never had a full season episode. Like, I think one season has about 10 episodes. So for me to know that now, I was shocked at how Samurai Jack was run. But as for off season five, I watched uh, I watched everything, episode one to ten, and I enjoyed everything. And they mentioned that this new Jack season five Jack is going to be more mature, and I can see it. Like right out of the gate, they didn't pull any punches; they just went out full blood and whatnot. Like it's really not meant for kids, but for us fans who have been following the series for a while. Well, they were right to air it on late night Adult Swim because there's some things happened that were not so kid-friendly. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Any further thoughts, Norman, or sh- shall we turn the floor over to the Safi? Well, I do like the art style. Um, there's a YouTube uh, video, I don't remember what it's called, but I think it's Film Theory, where 
they discuss. I think the video is called um, Scene by Scenes. It's really good where they talk about the art style. But yeah, that, that's my uh, thoughts on it for now. Excellent. Well then, Sefi, what what were your thoughts on Season 5? Well, Season 5, okay, I'm going to say this now. And I'm going to get a lot, a lot of people mad at me. I didn't watch Samurai Jack growing up. Heresy. Okay, I do remember at one point, I forget the episode. I remember at one point when I was over at my house for like a summer during a weekend. I don't know. I remember seeing Samurai Jack late, late at night, but I don't remember the episode. And I honestly don't even remember happened except for a lot of silence. Anyways, I was probably not even interested as a kid. I grew up with, um, I, I was born in 1997, so I don't think I watched it growing up. Neither, I, I doubt my parents even let me watch Samurai Jack growing up because they wouldn't let me watch Grim Adventures, Billy and Mandy, or Courage the Cowardly Dog growing up, so. <laughs> They probably didn't want you screaming like courage. Ah! <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And they didn't want to expose me to a lot of violence. Heck, I didn't even get to watch Austin Powers growing up. Although I did sneak the VHS, even though I had no idea what was going on. Anyways, <laughs> Samurai Jack Season 5, it was new to me. And as someone who hadn't seen very, very much of the previous season seasons or the show when it first aired and I did do my research before I actually watched a few episodes uh Samurai Jack actually aired I like the show actually and I want to go back and like watch the whole entire thing like beginning to end I thought season five even with um no context or little context to the previous show was a pretty good fun ride for people like me who didn't grow up watching Samurai Jack. And I also, the first three episodes to my parents after I became obsessed with it, they enjoyed it even though they had no idea what was. So that's good. Very, very nice. And what about you, Silva? Ah, uh, for me, I, uh, the fir- I still remember the very first Samurai Jack episode I watched was Jack and the Three Archers. Uh, and indeed, it was an episode told almost entirely in silence, pure reliance on natural sounds, leaves rustling, uh, feet crunching against the ground. Oh, I think I remember the episode where he had to go blindfolded, right? Yes, eventually he had to beat them on his own ter- on their own terms. I remember and- seeing a lot of Aku in, what was it, like, in my journey, my first Not- episode late at night, though. Aku did a, had more than a few episodes. He was always... A recurring foe. I think my favorite was when he got the better of Jack by pr- pretending to be a woman. Oh, that episode. Uh, <laughs> what was it? I think in season four, was it? Yes, the, the way he just rubbed it in. Oh, me, old Aku. And Jack just losing it. Yeah, but I thought I was going to get laid. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. But Samurai Jack, when it came back, I was very much anticipating. And I love that they kept the old style of... Well, the choreography, the visuals, the animation style. Jack was the biggest thing they changed, and that became sort of the core component of this new season, how he had fallen what, and how he came back. And it was just really gratifying because here I am looking at all these archetypes, and the warrior is the hardest one to find a healthy representation. We are obsessed with the the shadow versions, the negative aspects. And we think that's the norm. But Samurai Jack is more, it really is pure warrior, even though he fell for a time. And so getting to see this was very positive, very uh, enjoyable. And yet it's also heartbreaking. I mean, you you see Jack at his finest, but his finest often involves a lot of self-sacrifice. And you feel for him. I will say there were moments that were a little disappointing or dragged a little towards the middle. But there's nothing that can compare with the exhilaration of seeing Samurai Jack don his gi once again. Mostly because I was getting tired of him running around almost naked. 
Well, <laughs> he, he, he's following the mantra of Breath of the Wild. After using one one or two weapons, it breaks, and you have to get a new one. Oh, don't don't, don't tell Jim Sterling. He'll hate the he'll hate the cartoon then. <laughs> Ah, but anyway, having given our overall thoughts, it's time to to wade into the den of spoilers with but a shining blade of criticism. Indeed. So if you haven't watched the uh, season yet, why? Go do it. Go do it now. Yeah. Go watch the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll wait. Well, I can't. We're waiting. We're waiting. Waiting, do, 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 do. waiting. Okay. Waiting, 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 <sighs> Okay, we're bored now, so we're going to go on without you. Ha <laughs> ha! Let's talk about the man, the myth, the guy you don't know, Jack. <laughs> Mostly because we never learned his real name. Yeah, really, what? I'm sad that they didn't actually, you know, tell us his name. I think... Are we going to have to ask the creators after the show? I think he's, he is Jack. No, he was given that nickname. Really? Mm-hmm. Yes. The first people he met were a bunch of street punks. I don't know. They were all alien and yet so very white. <laughs> oh. Whiter than you? Let's not go overboard, Safi. <laughs> and nobody whiter than me, sister. <laughs> but basically, they all called him Jack. And so and so he became known as Jack. But we never learned his real native name. But how did you guys feel when he first rode on in a very different ensemble of armor and weapons? He looks so cool. Keep that look forever. He's upgraded. Like I I I'll I'll be honest here. I didn't see Samurai Jack in the f- fullest. Like I mentioned before, um cable TV was terrible for following um a, a show like this. So when he rode on the motorcycle with his shogun armor and whatnot, I was thinking like, damn, what happened? Like, he is packing machine guns, rocket launchers, even a cool staff. Where's his sword? Like, wow. He's just packing like, woof, look at that cycle. You can play card game on it. <laughs> hey, it's silver. Yeah. Card games on motorcycles! Card games on motorcycles? Card games on motorcycles! Norman! Card games on motorcycles! Card games on motorcycles! <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help you. Oh, it's, it, it's not something you resist, you just go with the flow. Yes. But I found it fascinating because one of the big things in the previous seasons is that Jack never really gets the hang of modern technology. Uh, and in some ways that's sort of willful dissonance. He has an ancient a blade from the past. He drapes himself in the past and host uses that as an anchor. So in some ways I feel like uh, the fact he can't use modern tech is kind of on his part. He doesn't really want to learn. Mm-hmm. But then without his sword, he's got no choice. He has gone all in on the future and adapted really well, but it just was a testament of how far he'd fallen. And I think the biggest scene that, that really summed that up is after after defeating Scaramouche <laughs> with Scaramouche. Without his flute, without his swords, without his weapons, he was just walking up to him dragging this big old sword behind him with just this look of, let's get this over with. And I have to note something here. It's been 50 years since the last episode. 50 years has passed since then. In the show canon. For fans, it wasn't quite that long, but it felt that way. Well, the last season was done in 2004. Season 5 came in in 2017. So, do the math. Well, it was just such a thing to see Jack wielding modern weaponry and just looking so bitter. It was like, ah, Jack, what happened to you, man? He's been ruffled by the itchy beard, yet I want to pet it. It looks soft. But that's the question. Uh, like, what happened in between then and now? And we didn't learn that until much later in the season. But I, I will agree with Scaramouche. You know, Jack, baby, I'm not digging the beard, but I, I love the lion's mane. <laughs> <laughs> I like the beard. I like the lion's mane, too. Anyways, Scaramouche, we can talk about him a little bit more 
if we talk about additional characters, but he was a, he was a fun sort of farewell to the classic Samurai Jack villain. Things got much different after that. Mm-hmm. So Jack, having gotten all this armor, he's eventually reduced to just a loincloth of his tattered suit. How do you feel about Jack? He talked a lot this season. I think one, in one episode he talked more than he did in half of a previous season. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's times have changed, and the way that the story is, I think, um, who, who's the guy who made this? Like, Gendy Tartasovsky realized that, okay, I'm going to end this series. I might, I might as well subvert people's expectation of we're going to do the same thing of being artistic, yet we're going to give Jack some line, just so people know how frustrated he is. And perhaps that he's lost a lot of his composure. Mm-hmm. And talking about composure, seeing the inner demons or his inner workings of how things is, like, wow, he he he's lost himself. Like He has that mindset of, you're an idiot, kill yourself. Yeah, yeah, say. <laughs> Oh, we could have the return of Jackie the Blade. <laughs> yeah. But then we see Jack hit his low point. I mean, here here he is. Even when he's embittered, he just can't stop fighting to save people. He goes a little crazy. And I'll say this. Phantom Jack scares me. Phantom Jack? Uh, the inner demon you're talking about? The inner the inner demon. Mm. Well, one episode, he looks just like Samurai Jack of old. But as it goes on, he becomes more twisted and and menacing. He's like, oh, dang. He, he oh. has, like, the friggin' sharp teeth and just cartoony, more than usual look later on down the line. Mm-hmm. But that's the aspect of the inner demon. Like, you're doing something and he's the quote-unquote reasonable guy there where, what are, why are you even doing this? Nobody's remembering. You're, you're wasting your time. Just move on. Just look out for number one, which is you. Mm-hmm. But back to Jack and his demons... He also has a samurai demon following him around. And I gotta be honest, I was kind of disappointed when I found out what that, that green tinted samurai on the horse was supposed to be. And what's that? Well, it was basically some spirit of his ancestors saying, you failed your duty. It's time to commit honorable suicide. I believe seppuku is the term. Mm -hmm. It is true. And, or is it harakiri? I'm not Uh, sure. Seppuku. Seppuku. Uh, and I'm probably mispronouncing that. I apologize. But I was wondering if this was some sense of Jack's past or if he would have to face this de- this spirit to reclaim his sword. So I found out it's some guy saying, hey, you need to come over here and die. It won't be fun <laughs> dying. Yeah. Hey, hey, knock, knock. Who's there? Your death. Your death who? Your death is here for you. But in all honesty, when I saw the green samurai thingy on the horse i was thinking that probably this is the samurai spirit to bring jack to the straight path if you know what i mean yeah which, which is why i personally i felt kind of disappointed by what we uh what it turned out to be but what did you guys think of jack facing the great warriors and their disappointment uh, i don't know my Thoughts on this have been influenced by Gaijin Goomba's uh, retrospective on it or analysis or wh- whatever he does. Um, I've seen what he said about it and yeah, I-, I agree with him. But by the looks of it, his ancestors are disappointed and demands punishment. And as a samurai, he must do what needs to be done. In all technicality, um, Samurai Jack here, he's no samurai. As he is, or... Well, a samurai had titles and land, yes? Uh, not really. Um, a samurai, if I do understand right from what Gaijin Gumba said, is a warrior who is loyal to the master without question. If the master says, kill your family, he will kill his family without, uh, with no questions and without hesitation. Jack here is... Well, from what we see, he ain't no samurai. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, a, he's a ronin. He's a masterless samurai. Then let's go with that. And we shall. But how did you guys feel when he finally reclaimed his sword? I mean, for me, I was giddy. I was like, Yee! I was getting kind of tired of, of broody Jack. I was like, okay, I've seen, I've seen how far you've fallen as a warrior. I've seen you fall as a person. 
what, but now I need, I need Jack back. And there he is, empowered by three separate gods. Well, I have two opinions of it. Okay, go ahead. One, I'm glad that he's no longer wine, wine, whining all night. But at the same time, my thought when I first saw um, Jack come back from his downfall was, go back to the beard. The beard was hot. Uh, nah, I was liking the lion's mate, babe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he did look good in that shower scene, but you know. Hey. <laughs> Norman, how about yourself? Um, Cookie to those who get the reference of the song. Oh, uh, boy. Uh, for me, with uh, Jack's comeback here, the way that it's told was interesting because, well, it's a journey. He went up to the hill where he thought the sword could have been, but it's not there. At first, I thought that, okay, one of Aku's minions might have got it, but now nah, it's lost in the sense of it's mystically vanished into the ether where it went back to the Elder Gods. And Jack has to rediscover his past or his, what you might call this, purpose. And that purpose is to stop Aku from doing the evils. And finding himself back, going through the meditation and whatnot, and automatically getting everything back, like his gi, to his clean shave beard, to his hair, and the sword back. That was awesome. And don't forget Ashi at the same time too, protecting Jack. And she was violent, really violent. And that's a perfect segue, because I think the last phase is worth talking about after we've covered Ashi, who went through her own uh, arc. And I will say, I, I did I did love the, uh, the juxtaposition in that one episode. She, here's Ashi, and she's taken on a horde of... Uh, violent marauders <laughs> and army and blood everywhere. And then there's Jack with his epic tea-making skills. <laughs> oh, can you handle as he cleaves the ball? And here's Ashi just kind of, you know, decapitating. Oh, my God. Off. Did you remember that scene where Jack poured the hot water into the bowl? Oh, my God. That was so epic. Oh, it was so intense. I was on the edge of my seat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then, you know, Ashi stabs her bomb, whatever. Yeah. Jack pours the tea. <laughs> Oh my god, and served it to the monk. Oh god, that was so epic. Ah! Seth, you went in on this? Are we talking about Ashi? Well, for a moment we're talking about tea. <laughs> tea for two. Um, Can I have tea? If you got if you got some packet on hand. <laughs> okay. There's, no, there's nothing stopping you. But Ashi, mm. you talk about messed up childhoods. Oy. Child actors could watch this and say, well, now I don't feel so bad about myself. <laughs> I'm just going to say, holy crap! And that's <laughs> it. Well, that sums it up. I mean, born of darkness, wearing darkness. Oh, how many Oh, no, 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 no. She doesn't wear darkness. She burned darkness into her skin. Uh, there's a comic out there where Jack asks, Ah, oh, nice suit. What's the material made of? Uh, she just replies, It's just suit. <laughs> and the times, uh, the times that Jack uh, touches Achi, he goes, Blushing and like, oh no, what have I done? <laughs> I just remember a comic where it's like, actually, I was saying, it's like I'm wearing nothing at all. <laughs> nothing, nothing at all. all. Nothing at all, stupid sexy Ashi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the training of her and her sisters, they, they are Jack's counterparts. He trained from a young age to fight Aku. They trained from a young age to fight Jack. In some ways, they were trained even earlier than he. So I says, yeah, this is a really legitimate threat. This is not just evil henchmen of the day. Mm -hmm. And man, at first, they were just wiping the floor with Jack. Yep. And it took a maze, temple, whatever it is, for Jack to escape. And here's a revelation. Jack, for all his time in the future, never killed a human before. When trying to escape, he draw his first blood within 150 plus years probably, I, I don't know, probably 60 years of him being there. So, that's interesting. It's sort of startling. You think with all the bounty hunters uh, Ku hired, but apparently Jack always just 
gave them a good bonk on the head. Mm, most of them, if I do remember right, the ones that he killed off were cyborgs or robots. Yep, and that was that was the great censorship to still be PG on Cartoon Network. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I think uh, the wolf scene was it was the reasoning for why we're on Adult Swim, not Cartoon Network. It's like, oh, Jack has a puppy friend. It's, it's, it's snarly, but still cute. In the episode where Jack and Ashi are trying to escape from the great Leviathan creature, mm-hmm. I felt that Ashi had suddenly been hit with the idiot stick. Suddenly she was not very competent or skillful. Mm, not really. Um... Well, she was kind of <laughs> tied to um, Jack's back in a way. Oh my. <laughs> oh my. Nah, but honestly for me, um, I think that's within character because during this time, her duty is here to kill Jack in all possibility. And since they're trapped in the Leviathan, uh, mission almost complete. Now Ashi's job here is just to make Jack don't leave. Keep him in the Leviathan and kill him if possible. I did love the bench between them. Yeah. You are very wrong and very confused. <laughs> yeah. My favorite line is when Jack says, Ah, people pay money for this. <laughs> oh, yeah. The acupuncture. Yep. Uh, it's quite refreshing. I-, I think this is the moment where Jack realized that he needs to do something than brute. Like, well, when was the time where it clicked for Jack? When it clicked, well, basically when when he killed all of Ashi's sisters and now it was just her and him in the belly of the beast, he was like, I'm responsible for her. There was also a moment, I, I random thing, uh, <laughs> there was a comic later on after the series sort of about this, like touching upon how, you know, Jack kind of killed all of her sisters. <laughs> that sort of made me laugh. It, it shows Ashi and Jack just sleeping together. And Ashi's like, Jack, yes, you killed my... That's f- not a word! ...sisters. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. I found it on Tumblr. I'd have to find it again in order to uh, show you what I mean. <laughs> uh, that's okay. I'm, we, we, like, we're going to have to... Provide some links to the folks at home if we can. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do that in a minimum if possible. Here's the thing. My favorite Ashi... Okay, well, no. I, I shouldn't start with that. I should start with what What was your favorite episode for Ashi? Mm, well, ladies first then. My Is favorite that... episode was when... um, It was after Ashi figured out, okay, Aku isn't how I was born and raised to know. So... um. <laughs> So, it's basically Ashi's journey, like, where she redesigns herself and comes out into a new world, basically recreating herself and basically pulls Jack out of, um, his suicidal, um, tendencies. Even though, that that was my favorite episode in the series, so... Yeah. Also, here's the comic. Yay. That would be episode Yay. six, by the way. Episode six, yes. I don't and know. No- that was my favorite Ashi episode. Just seeing her grow by herself and we get more time and character development from her. It was fun. Mm-hmm. And as for me, I would say the same thing, but saying the same thing would be boring. I'll say uh, an episode earlier. Um, season 5 episode um, 5 and this is the part where Ashi has accepted that Aku's teaching is wrong and is following Jack and she does whatever she can to help Jack and this is the part where they are trying to save the children Jack thinks that the children are dead and yeah I'm gonna go um, you know ritually kill myself Hey. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you liked how Ashi handled the, the head boss of that facility? Yes. I, I just like how Ashi took what, everything she knew from her teachings and applied it to, well, 
not to hurt Jack, but to help Jack save the world. And the abuse she took in that torture chamber was kind of interesting. Was that torture the first time we saw a little bit of Aku's power? Because I remember she turned blue. Uh, that could be the lighting. But the abuse she took does reveal later on to be, well, who her dad was. And that explanation with Aku was pretty fascinating too. <laughs> Unless, oh, you know how it is, right? You try to raise them well, but then they join your mortal enemy. And I mean it, he is a mortal who is my enemy. <laughs> Uh, what about you, Silver? Um, favorite Ashi moment? Well, I will have to, I will have to agree with Safi. Uh, Ashi's journey, which in a way celebrated the best of Jack with all these great cameos, all these returning faces, including the Samurai. Also, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, let's not forget, even though it had nothing to do with Ashi's journey, the best line in animation history. You know what I mean, right? Mm, gonna need a. You're, you're of... gonna need to censor me out a bit, but wow, oh, it... what a freak! Looked like a talking penis. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, they got to secure. Even as they're showing all this goofy fun stuff, they got to get that mature uh, content in one more time. Yep. Oh, you're talking about the elephant. Scaramouche. Well, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know about the elephant. No, this was Scaramouche getting on the boat. On someone else's head, uh, the head is all shriveled up, and yeah, I'm a, I'm mostly thinking of uh, the samurai running the bars. Like, well, we're getting all kinds of weirdos here oh, tonight. I remember him. He was a hip hop samurai, y'all. But <laughs> he. Oh God, Norman, not you too. What with the with the funky chop, chop, and the crazy cut, mm, but and the turkey cut. Samurai. Cop. Yeah, but that bar seems to be filled with all of Jack's mortal enemies. <laughs> yeah, they're all held together by band-aids. <laughs> Dude, really? Those wounds don't seem so bad as ours. It's because you got no soul, fool. <laughs> but seeing how she literally wipe away her past and then be reborn as this more nature-heavy uh, character. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a great turning point. That was where I felt like she really stepped into her own. I had seen her support Jack. But of equal importance was her fight with her mother, where she basically said, we were dead the moment we were born. Yep. And that turned out to be prophetic. Yeah. A fight with Jack never ends well. Or well, serving Naku. But, but basically, when she actually slew her own mother, it's like, okay. Holy that, mother's God. That's that's hardcore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but still, uh, it's one of those scenarios where it's kind of symbolic. Where Ashi here, to rid herself of her past, has to literally get rid of the one thing that is holding her back, which is her mother. She herself has shown from a young age to be very, I, I think, rebellious was the word distracted she she was always curious about the outside world mm -hmm. yes and the, the moment where jack shown the tree i think that was a sakura tree but the moment where jack showed her the beauty of nature and what it is she realized that oh aku is misleading and he's not what we think he is he's not good basically he's evil and jack here is the one only thing that can stop him so, having covered Ashi, well, we're not quite done with Ashi, but we're almost there. Uh, because now it's time for our, the final player in this piece, Aku, who had just a little bit of a voice change. Well, you can't bring back someone from the dead just to do a recast. You clearly haven't seen Rogue One. Oh, God, no. Uh, there's a really good reason for that, too. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but I'm saying this, they did uh, an excellent job. True that. Yes, but, uh, Greg Baldwin reprising the role as uh, Mako's uh, understudy worked out well. And plus, we got the greatest thing ever from Twitter from him. What is it? Extra <laughs> thick! Hey. Everything must be extra thick! Before we go on talking about Aku, um, I want to know, what's your favorite line from him? Well, I guess I already quoted him talking about his daughter and his mortal enemy. But uh, 
I think I just like him saying, no, we do not say that name here. <laughs> this is a safe place. <laughs> oh, my, mine would be, but he hasn't aged. I mean, like at all. He just grew the stupid beard and looks like he's been here forever. I just don't know. What if I can handle that? <laughs> just Why? like Keanu Why? Reeves. That beard is hot. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It's like Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Never ages, just grows a beard. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's one of the delights of Aku. He's always been able to be so goofy, and yet then he can do something utterly despicable, <clears throat> and it's the same character. He just switches like that. Yeah, and, well, um, just to plug in Gaijin Goomba's recent video, he mentioned, or he talks about Aku, and one of the few things that he mentioned was... In one episode, it's shown that this little town is showing a bit of rebellion where the kids are not afraid of Aku anymore because of Jack and showing the, uh, the kids' uh, play act and them not being afraid. And if you're Aku in this situation, what do you do? Like, do you go and rampage the town, destroy everything except for the kids to learn their lesson or what? Silver, do you have an idea? Well, I know the episode you're talking about, yeah. so I know the the outcome. Yeah, I know. Okay, so the, take away Silver. The most poorly attempted. I the eat most poorly a attempted. sandwich. Actually, he did that in an episode too. <laughs> the very first episode, second actually, but the first story arc, Aku eats a sandwich on TV. <laughs> but yeah, Aku tries to have story time with the kids. <laughs> oh but, yeah, I but, I actually. I remember that. I mean, I watched it like um, like in my binge watch before the series began. So yes, you watched it before the series began. Wow, no, not time travel the series began. I meant like season five. Like it was one of the episodes I watched before season five happened. Are you like a? Are you the Doctor's companion by chance? <laughs> oh wow, Maybe. you don't know me. <laughs> but anywho, Silva. But anywho, so so Aku, he he first he makes himself a grand warrior. Then he's Red Riding Hood, uh, Goldilocks, and it's just a complete goof fest until, uh, I think the best joke in that line was Jack and Rapunzel, let down your hair, and she drops a mare on him. <laughs> oh, boys. Yeah, but still, Aku is, in, in all essence, evil, but the way he conducts his evil deeds is interesting. But anyway, um, Silver, let's continue on with Aku and we can expand on how interesting he is. Okay, so starting with you, Norman, how did you feel when he when he killed the Scotsman? Oh, well, the Scots... the best character in the series! No! <laughs> well, I-, I felt devastated, but you have to give it up to the Scotsman too because he held his ground and he fought in what he believed in. And... <sighs> I just have to say this. The way that Aku dealt with it, I, I think that's this Street Fighter, the movie line where, well, how do I put this? Like, I'm gonna quote Bison from the Street Fighter movie that Raul Julia played. For you, the day Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. And that's how it felt. That's how it felt when everybody there planned to siege Aku's castle with everything they had like their machine guns, their horses their cavalry, just everything they had and Aku was just in bed like oh what's going on oh people oh, let me stop them Back, squash, done oh Scotsman, oh you're annoying I beam I beam, and he just did it so casually it's just like on off, He's, he doesn't even try to argue <laughs> yeah it's like my <laughs> I don't care, just zap. Yeah, and and, and that's what I mean. It's like that quote. But for me, it was a Tuesday. Like, damn. But I do have to give mad respect to the Scotsman, though. How is he still alive? Scottish magic. Celtic magic. Celtic magic. Yeah, Celtic magic, yes, that's it. And then we hadn't seen anything of him until the season finale. Oh, well, yeah. uh, but... But what we saw, we saw one thing. We saw that, it, well, actually, we saw several things. One, he's very prolific. Uh, his wife is apparently an octomom many times over <laughs> and a cannon. <laughs> and the scene where, uh, where he's listing all his children to Jack, he's like, so many. 
<laughs> yeah, the Scotsman daughter. So many children. And that's not even scratching the surface. What sons are they all dead? Uh, I think it's only uh. daughters because there's Flora, Maven, Isha, Branda, <laughs> Uh, I'd be impressed. Yeah. I'd be impressed if you could quote them all. What are you doing? Cover up, the dad. <laughs> no buts. Oh boy, just like Overwatch. <laughs> we get them to the dance party. We're going to the battlefield. <laughs> oh boys, uh, if you want to have the full list, it's there, Silver, in the links. Oh gosh. Oh, oh lord. <laughs> I've never. Seen- let let me read it off. Let me end I've it. never seen that many angry redheads outside of a <laughs> Spider-Man. <laughs> but see, it, where where is the list? Ah, here it is. Flora, Maeve, Isla, Isla. I don't know. Let's Brandina, let's let's not go through the whole list because we'll. Regina, we'll Alana, Oben, Ardabe, Fiona, Asi. Bonnie, Lorna, Molly. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, yeah, we, we got it, we, we got it, we got it. We're Bonnie? actually, we're good. Because now, well, Sefi, we are delaying the best part. We've Thank covered, you. we've covered Aku, we've covered Ashi, we've covered Jack, and though a lot of them needed to spend some time covering up themselves. <laughs> Shauna, Nora, <laughs> Tesla, <laughs> Shauna, Ifus, Edney. Freya, hey, hey Safi. I'm almost done. Just give me a second. Geisha, Grisella, Wait, Indian. Geisha? Whatever. Geisha? Yeah. Yes, Geisha. Anyways. Dontha, Cora, Davina, and Kina. Okay, now. Okay, well, I know that can't be all of them, but uh, let us now talk about the end. Mm. This is where you get the tissues, people. This is where the waterworks begin. <sighs> yep. Uh, the battle, it's, well, okay, one, there's Aku being his truly evil self, where he corrupts a young woman and just says, you need to bring your best, and your best is me. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, boy. But then and he does the only thing a villain can do. He monologues while the hero is nearly defeated. Yeah. And this epic, um, well, the end series or the end story for this is really epic. Like, if a series were to end, Samurai Jack would be the perfect example of that because it brought in everything. It referenced everything. Although some people have complained about the pacing in that we were, we did get the Blitzkrieg bop of returning characters. So, okay, Safi, who is your favorite returning set of characters? It can be a group or it can be an individual. Can I make it the Scotsman? Of course. Yay! As long as, as long as you don't read that list again. <laughs> and Norman, what about yourself? I jump good. I jump, oh yes. No, jump good. <laughs> I just jump like good. him. He's just, he's uh, like, uh, okay, his, his name is the jump good monkey man and his tribe. <laughs> That's what he literally says on the trivia page. My god. Really? He has no name? You know what they call that? What? The What's good jump monkey with a, with no name. <laughs> yeah, there it really is. Jump good. And he aged. Oh, yes. You look a little long in the tooth, but uh, very much still a spry guy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what about you, Silva? The the robots with the giant stone samurai. I, think about this for a minute. Self-aware robots have retrofitted an ancient samurai statue into a giant battle mech to, bat, to fight an ancient evil that was nearly slain by Thor, Shiva, and Osiris. Mm-hmm. This is just pure imagination run wild, and I love it. Yep. I, I, I don't see gypsy danger anywhere, but still, um, having this samurai robot thingy, it's pretty really cool, too. Exactly. So, I'd, I'm, I'm smitten. I just love seeing that return, but then I was also heartbroken uh, as Aku rained down death on all of them. Oh, yeah, that, that was just... But at the same time, too, if you remember... um. Most of the warriors who were fighting Aku got infected with Aku and they turned into Aku himself and fought warriors. Well, that I've never been really clear on if they were crushed and Aku just left a little bit of himself behind or if he converted them. I was never clear on that. So, but it, it's sad either way, but you see these characters, they come, but then after, after, we get a little bit of turn. They say that in, in fiction, if two women are together, they talk relationships. If two men are to, 
together they fight. Well, Samurai Jack went the opposite. Ashi and her mama, brutal. <laughs> oh yeah. Jack, Jack and the Jack and the That's Scotsman, her? they're just like, uh, oh, marry I'll, my daughter. <laughs> I can't. I'm already seeing someone. I don't think she's your type, laddie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see if I can find quotes from that one. Uh, I don't but think so. Your pick. Well, yeah. I'm kind of with someone. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. I, uh, yeah, she's not your type, Laddie. And that was the that was the last line the Scotsman ever said to Jack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering the ending, I don't blame him for saying that. Yes, we must talk about the ending as Ashby, now in control and bolstered by love. Pretty much sets up her own demise. Mm-hmm. So, Safi, Jack finally kills Aku. Your reaction? Everybody! What? Stories of times! Hmm. Well, I thought that was when they kissed. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting... Well, it seems that <laughs> Safi really likes Aku. Huh. Alright. Apparently. No, no. I... I... Okay, I like Gaku. He's a good villain, but I'm sad because now that he's dead, Aji no longer exists, and now I'm mm. sad. Also, the timey wimey. That's not a word. At, <laughs> at the time, you wouldn't know that. Oh, but but Norma, what did you think as Aku was finally, finally defeated? Finally, Jack did it. After how many years, he finally did it. Yeah. Yeah. And th- there is a certain satisfaction as you hear Jack just shout, no more. No I mean, more. But at the same time, I felt bad that Jack didn't get to finish Aku in the future first. I mean, that was the Aku that had done him the most damage. Mm, true that. Even though it's technically the same Aku. But Silver, the song says, gotta get back, back to the past, Samurai Jack. No, but thinking, thinking back to the episode Norman reference where the kids, where Aku tries to tell kids a bedtime story starring him, <laughs> they all dream of how Jack finally defeats Aku. So I guess that'll have to be, that'll have to be the future showdown that I celebrate. And this was the past. Mm. And yes, but it is just so fitting to finally see Aku brought low. And that is finally Jack's end. He's yeah, free he of his quest. Goes through his whole entire skull. Oh my gosh, that was hardcore. Yeah, that brutal. Mm-hmm. And Aku just shrinking in size each time. This this is a shocking revelation. Um, this was renovation. This was a shocking revelation, revelation for revelation. me when Ashi got all of Aku's power and. Okay, like, oh, you can do the hand thingy, you can uh, have eye laser beam me, you can refire. And then when Ashi said that I have Aku's power, time travel! Like, what? You can do time that? Travel. You know, you're not supposed to announce the attacks. Like, lipstick taser! <laughs> well, it doesn't stop Ryu from doing it. Well, Ryu, Ryu's a special case. <laughs> but still. But no, that is, she's actually being very smart. I mean, as much as I'd like to see Aku get taken down in the future... It is smart to just like, oh, I have his powers. Time travel. Boom. And future Aku's last words. Oh, no. <laughs> but here's the thing where maybe it's a nitpick from me, but couldn't Aku time travel to the past to stop Jack from killing him from the past? Well, I think we're getting into the timey-wimey thing, which sets up for the wedding. Mm. <laughs> it's like current Lagan, except it makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, really. It's like... You know, I I don't get it, like how Ashi suddenly dies as soon as the wedding starts. It's like, shouldn't she have died as soon as Daku was defeated? Probably I can explain it, but um, Silver, uh, how where, where do you want to take this from? Well, why Aku can't travel back to the past? Watch out! Why? It could be that he knows he can't meet himself in the past. Oh, it could be a situation where... You can't be in two places at the same time. Like, um, I, I don't know, probably a Doctor Who reference or probably some Back to the Future thing or any time travel thing where your, you yourself cannot be in two places. Like, there's a block in the time rift or something like that. I'm just spitballing ideas here, so I could be totally wrong. 
But that's what I mean when he, I say he can't meet himself. But also, Aku never tried to use the time travel to thwart Jack in the past uh, during the series. Could it be that Aku himself is afraid of altering the timeline? It could better the realm he r- rules than the realm he might lose. Well, maybe in terms of logical sense, when it comes to Aku's uh, planning here, is that okay? I in in the first season of in the first season in episode one where um, Aku sends Jack to the future, it's a scene where Aku has to work his way to the future to make sure that uh, he gets there. And flinging Jack into the future is just an added bonus of confirmation that he will, will win. And at the same time, once Jack's there, just stop him and make life a living hell for him. And with the Pass your, I don't know. I mean, it's a bit confusing when you really think about it. But whatever the case, Aku basically knows he's done goofed and really should have finished Jack right away. Mm-hmm. But still, he is the generic villain who needs to monologue his plan to the world or or rebel. Mm-hmm. But yes, and now we come to the end. Jack and Ashi are about to have blissful marriage. Yep. And the setup for the marriage was beautiful, from Jack putting on his kimono and Ashi putting on her kimono and preparation for the. It was just beautiful. And all the all the people who helped train Jack, all the folks who, kind of a standing. Because here's the bitter pill: it's not just Ashi that's gone. Mm-hmm. It's the Scotsman mm-hmm. and the samurai. Mm-hmm. And the dogs, yeah. and the robots, and the and the future Spartans, yeah, and, and everything. The good guys. Yeah. It's everything. Like here, here's the thing about time traveling. Where in Jax's case, where I, I think even his inner demon um, talks about this because what do those what do those kids even matter? If you stop Aku, none of this will happen. I think that's a that's foreshadowing to what. Could have happened, or what might happen with Ashi? Uh, but, but this is a point I'll argue very, very strongly. There is a reason why Jack doesn't just let people die so he can go back to the past. It's foiled him several times over in past episodes. In a sense, they never existed, so they were never there to die. Mm-hmm. But Jack will remember them. He, he carries that alternate world with him for the rest of his days. And he, it's a judgment on himself who he is as a person. Am I willing to look, make someone else pay the price? He never would have asked Ashi to, to make that sacrifice, but Ashi made the choice for him or perhaps didn't even realize it. And that's her sacrifice. But Jack shows his own nobility by not just treating people as disposable items to be swapped in and out of time. That's the big thing that separates him from a coup and many others. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing where Jack as a character is really noble. If you are given a situation where um, if a bad thing happens in the future and you have the chance to change it, and your journey t- to set location, the people you've met and whatever, knowing what you know, let's, let's just say with Jack's case here, would you do the same thing? Like, would you change anything different? Like, if you see a person drowning and you have the chance to help, you know you can help and you know you will succeed in the quest. But it will drag time or it will uh, stop you from getting to the time portal, whatever it is. Would you do it? And here where the question lies, because Jack here says, I will save the person because it's the noble thing to do. Or just that he knows... It's the the right thing. It's sort of interesting that the right thing is this separate standalone. It's not something he gets to decide. It's something he is in service towards. Mm, and I think it's embedded in his personality because he's grown up to be a noble samurai, as the character is. And he's doing whatever he can to live up to the code of the samurai. But it is a little sad to realize that the world he knew, maybe its inhabitants will one day be born a little bit different. Goodness knows the Scotsman is his own temporal anomaly. I'm sure he'll find a way. Well, he, he yeah, is a ghost. Yeah, they can, they can <laughs> you think you can get rid of me that fast, laddie? You know, it would be spooky if the Scotsman 
the Scotsman is still alive and he's created a time paradox for himself where he exists and doesn't exist. He's just a ghost and hunts Jack and asking him to marry his daughter somehow. Well, that, that, there's a comic for everyone to write. Jack is sleeping in bed and the ghost of the Scotsman plays in. Laddie! Ah! <laughs> How are you even here? Celtic magic. Oh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, um, Anthony C did a video on just how this time paradox makes no sense. Mm -hmm. How so? Well, if Ashi is, was never born, then she was never able to take Jack back to the past. Ergo, he can't get back to the past, so we're right back where we started. But that means that Ashi is born, so she can form the portal to take him to the past to wipe herself out, but then she can't do that because she wiped herself out, blah, 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 blah. It's back to the future rules, which make no bloody sense. Yeah. I I'm going to go with the fact of, well, back again to the back to the future thing where things did happen like the what you call this the timeline where jack is in the future got thrown to the future that happened but once ashi brought jack to the past that splits into another timeline where jack killed aku and stopped everything from happening and since in that timeline ashi well technically isn't born isn't well, that future never existed. Um, we get to see her erasing herself. And how do I put this? It's the butterfly effect. I, I have to challenge one point, though. If it's an alternate future, there's two problems. One, Ashi wouldn't fade away because that alternate timeline was preserved. But two, it means that Jack really should have defeated Aku in the future because he just left all his friends high and dry with no magic sword. That is true, too. <laughs> I'm going to go with that the, they averted the future, but time allowed one tiny paradox to exist. That Jack was thrown to the future and made it back somehow. I'm going to ask, how did the ending for Tengen... Well, spoilers for Tengen Topa Green Lagan. Uh, how did that one end? Like, I remember Kami... No, not Kami. Simone's love interest was there. They married and she died. Well, she had become an anti-spiral energy. And when S Simone and all his friends eliminated that, she barely held on long enough to get married, but she knew her end was coming. So, okay, that makes a bit more sense than Jack here, all right. Yeah, there's no time travel in that. It's just her doing her best to hang in there. And it's so sad. It's all very sad. I'm going to cry now. You know. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> oh. But I, I feel we've been, we've covered even just a fraction of what happened in this series. I thought it was a grand time. Yeah, the the journey to the end is just too amazing. And the heartbreak that Jack's face is just heartbreaking. It, it's, it's really, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I found what, everything that happened to Jack was uh, like, it shouldn't have happened to him. Like, he's just a good guy trying to do the... A good, the, the best he could out of the situation. And as people say, the journey is import, uh, the journey is also important than the end. And in Jax's case here, within his time spent in the future learning everything, he, I would technically say that with his knowledge of the future and how things work, he will make Japan great again. Oh, great. Gotta get back Orange Jack. <laughs> no, I, no. I went. To I want to make Japan great again. It would be fantastic. <laughs> Aku, he was a bad hombre. I'm, I'm going to put up a wall so there are no more space demons. <laughs> ah, you. And, and I'm going to make Thor, Isis, and Osiris pay for it. <laughs> but not really. No, 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 no. Uh, anyway, before before I before I drive all our viewers into a tizzy, uh, let us go with... Your thoughts on the closing scene and your final thoughts overall, Sapphire. My final thoughts? It was a nice, peaceful, bittersweet, melancholic ending that gave a symbolism for hope in the future for Jack, even though Ashi is gone. And overall, I'm, I'm just going to say what I said at the beginning. Like, it was a fun ride. It was full of hijinks. And while there were some references I probably missed... Due to lack of uh, series knowledge, it, it was a fun ride. I didn't enjoy 
time traveling that much. Like, the time traveling could have been worked better, especially with Ashi, like, suddenly dying in the middle of their wedding when she could have died, like, before that. I mean, for me, that was bold. No, that's that's not impactful enough. That's not impactful enough. But overall, I would recommend it to um, newcomers, like, who are of age, not, like, young kids. Definitely not. And uh, even if you haven't seen the series, I do recommend that you watch it, like the previous four seasons, although I would recommend you watch them anyway. But if you choose not to and just skip to the fifth season, that's fine too. Because even though, um, you know, it's kind of a fifth season, it's is its own thing, and even if you haven't watched the previous series, you can still enjoy it. Well said. Norman, your thoughts on the closing scene and the series overall? The closing scene is the... How do I put this? It's one of those scenarios where our hero here is crushed. Every good deed he's done, and he's not even rewarded with anything. Like, he has his reward, but... It got taken away from him even before he could enjoy it. But at the end, where he, where he realized there's still hope for him, that was still, that was nice. And screen face to black, episode CI, done. But still, if you think about it, the gods, as they are, they're not mean. Probably Ashi will be reborn in some shape or form, and he'll meet her one day as a different form. And here's the real question. Is Jack immortal or does he, or will he die soon? Because if you really think about it, Jack is older than his dad right now. Always a possibility. Although it's never really clear if he, if he still will resume aging or not. Mm-hmm. For all we know, that, that might have been Jack many years later. Yeah, probably. But still, the, the, the show in itself is good. I, I wish I've seen the whole series from start to end. But the fight choreography, the humor, the art, the almost everything about it was just good. I, do you guys remember the ninja battle between Jack and the ninja where Jack fights in the light while the ninja fights in the shadow? That fight was amazing. And the tension that it presents to the audience was amazing. Like, there's no other word for me to say. Samurai Jack took what could have been a novel idea and turned it into the masterpiece that it is. So, I say people, I say to people who are interested, go watch this. This is worth the time. And Silver, what about you? Uh, it's a hard thing. It is true, all of Jack's exploits, except slaying Aku, are lost, wiped away. Everything he experienced is gone. But Jack has never been one to demand attention or or recognition. Second episode is the first thing he says after a battle is, thanks are not necessary. This is my duty. He's always been driven by that. And even when he lost his way, it needled at him. That final shot is hopeful, even if he never does find Ashi, even if she's not reborn. The world she helped protect is a testament to her sacrifice, and Jack has always found comfort in nature. He's hurt, he carries wounds from a world that no longer exists, but that adds a certain sweetness to the beauty that he preserved. It's hard to describe, but there's a book I read uh, called Treason, the name of a planet. Oh. And a guy talks about how hearing the screams of the earth adds a cer- helps him appreciate the sweetness of life. And I think that's the thing. Even if you you have a pain, it makes you appreciate the beauty and joy that is there in front of you. And so I found the ending bittersweet but hopeful, which I think is more true to life. I am sorry that Jack and Ashley didn't get to be together and raise a family themselves. But I also have to question, Jack has nearly fallen in love with Aku or Aku's uh, descendants twice now. Uh, Dude's got some issues. Where now? Which one? He needs to hit the dating scene more. Uh, remember when, when Aku was disguised oh, as that. a green-skinned yeah. woman? 
And why do you see, think the descendant? Like, yeah, well, uh, she is his descendant, uh-huh. Christian daughter. So Jack's got a weird dating life. That's true. He needs to hit the he needs to hit the clubs a little more. Mm, true that. <laughs> like honestly, Jack, you Jack a baby. You need to hit out a club, baby. And you don't bring a club to a club. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, there's a dance party people tribe thingy. Probably he can hook up there. Well, there, there's always hope for the future. And that is what Samurai Jack always was. Even when things were at their bleakest, there was the hope he could fix the future. So literal hope for the future. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And with that, I think we've covered the full range of, of Samurai Jack. I, I loved the fifth season. Some eyebrows raised at the ending, but the emotion and the enjoyment overpower any criticism for me. But we must say farewell to Samurai Jack for his his adventures for the moment have run their course. There's always possibilities, but I'm glad to have a conclusion more than anything. Yeah, the way that the show ends, even with its flub with time traveling and confusion, I would say that it ended perfectly. The way that the story has been told, you feel for Jack. Like, he deserved that somber moment of the knowledge that he has peace. He's in a peaceful state of mind where nothing could go wrong, whatever could go wrong. But turning to our own futures, Norman, what's next on the MBS show? Hmm, well, the way that we've been doing the episodes for now is a bit, well, we're neglecting the comics. So I believe that we should go back to the comics. And one master of chaos to another, why don't we review the My Little Pony mainline comics? And I think this is the Chaos Arc? What's it called? A uh, Chaos Theory. Yes, the Chaos Theory. If you remember the issue, do point it out here because I forgot. <laughs> Uh, issues 48 through 50. Ah, yes. So we'll be reviewing that series in the future, which is actually one week from now. So yeah. The future! Yep, so we'll do that. But before we head off silver, I need to say thank you to Nem. He wanted us to talk about it and is willing to pay the money. So thank you, Nem, for, well, wanting this because I'm sure that out of all the topics that you get, you could have suggested to us, Samurai Jack is one thing we really enjoy. Oh, by the way, Silver, he wants us to talk about the new the new Dragon Ball series. So that's uh, well something for you to consider. I'm out. <laughs> well, we we can talk about how Goku dooms the universe another time. <laughs> yeah, indeed. But anywho, uh, as a thank you to the Patreons, uh, I like to thank. Lurker Cat, Twilight Genesis, Nembri Rakotarius, Starstream, and myself, Black. Like, thank you so much for the support, guys. Um, if you want to support the show, it is at the uh, patreon.com slash the MBS show. Um, things are over there, and yeah, just look at it. And if you're interested, please do support us. But anyway, Silver, take us out, or take me out on a date. Aha! Oh my, how forward. No! Oh wait, me. <laughs> but anyway, on a less less awkward note, thank you for wa- joining us for this MBS show. Look back at Samurai Jack. He got back to the past, and it cost a lot, but we love him for what he gave to the world. Mm-hmm. And so, signing off. I am Cecilia Quill, and I am Norman Sanzo. I am Sapphire Hartson, and we'll see you again for another episode of the MBS show. We're saying adios. See ya. Bye bye. <laughs> So I've been to the year 3000. Nothing's changed, but they lived underwater. Is that what that song is? Oh, I mean, I see, a boy, I see a boy band, and I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, well, he is young. Yeah.